muscles of anterior abdominal wall. Now let's take a closer look at the anterior abdominal wall after the skin has been removed. First, it's important to understand the layers that make up the abdominal wall. The most superficial layer, of course, is the skin. Just beneath that lies the superficial fascia, which is essentially the subcutaneous tissue. Above the level of the umbilicus, this fascia is a single thin layer, but below the umbilicus, it divides into two distinct parts, the fatty superficial layer, known as Camper's fascia, and the deeper membranous layer, called Scarpa's fascia. In the illustration, you can notice that the membranous layer of superficial fascia has been partially retained on the right lower region. This layer is important because it carries superficial veins such as the superficial epigastric vein and the superficial circumflex iliac vein. Now moving deeper, you can clearly see the external oblique muscle along with its aponeurosis on each side. The aponeurosis of the external oblique is pierced by several anterior cutaneous nerves, which supply sensation to the overlying skin. Do remember that the external oblique is not only the largest, but also the most superficial of all the lateral abdominal muscles. In the midline, you can identify two very important landmarks, the umbilicus and the linea alba. The linea alba is a tendinous median line that runs from the xiphoid process above all the way down to the pubic symphysis below. It serves as a central meeting point for the aponeuroses of the abdominal muscles. Now let's move to this lateral view where the external oblique muscle can be seen much more clearly. As you observe the image, notice that the umbilicus is positioned anteriorly, while at the back, a portion of the latissimus dorsi muscle is also visible. One striking feature in this view is the interdigitation of the external oblique with the serratus anterior muscle at its origin. This interlocking arrangement gives a saw-like appearance and it helps in providing additional strength to the chest and abdominal wall. Moving downwards, the external oblique muscle inserts along the iliac crest. From here, as we trace it towards the front, it continues as the broad external oblique aponeurosis, which then contributes to the formation of the anterior abdominal wall and the linea alba. In this image, you can see that the external oblique muscle has been removed on the left side, but its aponeurosis has been left intact. With the external oblique removed, the underlying internal oblique muscle is now clearly visible on the left. This gives us a better appreciation of the layered arrangement of the abdominal wall muscles. If you look carefully, you can also identify the inguinal ligament, which is an important landmark running from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Along with it, the ilioinguinal nerve can be seen, which supplies sensation to parts of the groin and upper thigh. Another key feature in this image is seen in the lower part of the external oblique aponeurosis. Here it is pierced by the spermatic cords on both the right and left sides. In this lateral view, the internal oblique muscle is well demonstrated. You can clearly see that it takes its origin from the iliac crest, as well as the thoracolumbar fascia. As we follow its fibers posteriorly, notice that they insert into the inferior borders and tips of the lower three ribs, along with their cartilages. This arrangement helps in stabilizing the lower ribs and also plays a role in respiration. An important feature to note here is that both the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve are shown piercing through the internal oblique muscle. Also in this image, the lower six ribs from the seventh to the twelfth are well displayed along with the intercostal muscles that occupy the spaces between them. In this image, you can see that on the right side, the anterior wall of the rectus sheath has been removed.
which exposes the rectus abdominis muscles underneath. The rectus abdominis is a paired muscle that runs vertically on either side of the linea alba along the anterior surface of the abdominal wall. It plays an important role in trunk flexion and maintaining posture. Now look at the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis. Here you can identify a curved tendinous line called the linea semilunaris. This landmark separates the rectus abdominis from the lateral abdominal wall muscles, such as the external oblique and the internal oblique. Just above the pubis, you can see two small triangular muscles, one on each side. These are the pyramidalis muscles. Though often considered minor, they help tense the linea alba. On the left side of the image, the rectus abdominis muscle has been partially removed. This allows us to see the posterior wall of the rectus sheath, along with the course of the inferior epigastric vessels, which are clinically important in abdominal surgery. Finally, notice that laterally on the left side, a portion of the transversus abdominis muscle is visible, along with the intercostal nerve supplying the abdominal wall. In this image, we are looking at the lateral view of the transversus abdominis muscle. To make this muscle more visible, both the external oblique and the internal oblique muscles have been excised. An important highlight of this image is the neurovascular plane, which lies just superficial to the transversus abdominis. Within this plane, you can identify the 9th, 10th, and 11th intercostal nerves, along with the subcostal nerve and the iliohypogastric nerve. These nerves supply the muscles in the overlying skin of the abdominal wall. In this deeper dissection of the anterior abdominal wall, we can see that on the left side, all of the abdominal wall muscles have been removed, exposing the parietal peritoneum beneath. On the right side, however, the cut ends of the external oblique and internal oblique muscles are visible, while the transversus abdominis remains intact. This contrast helps us appreciate the different layers and their relative positions. Moving to the lower abdominal region, the urinary bladder is illustrated along with the median umbilical ligament, which represents the remnant of the fetal uricus. On the right side, the inferior epigastric vessels are seen lying just superficial to the transversus abdominis. On the left side, in addition to the cut ends of the inferior epigastric vessels, you can also identify the obliterated umbilical artery.